May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, she made her way through the streets of the city to the place where he lay in death. The past couple of nights had been a terrible time as she remembered his face in life and recalled the awful horror of his death. He had shown so much promise. He was so full of life. How much everyone loved him. How could this have happened? She found herself saying over and over again, how could God allow this to happen? Her heart quickened as she came closer to the place where his body was, and tears again flooded her eyes once more as she was overcome with a wave of grief that almost brought her to her knees. But she continued on, and the words of the psalm that had been her constant companion over these few days echoed in her heart. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? She could see the place now in the near distance, but she could go no further. And she wondered how she would carry on without him. And him, so senselessly killed, while visiting a friend in a community in Florida. Not unlike the grief of this woman was the grief of Mary Magdalene. Two difficult and probably sleepless nights, Mary Magdalene tried to absorb the tragic death of Jesus as she and his family and friends looked on helpless to stop the violence. He too had shown such promise. In fact, many had placed all their hopes in him. And he too was well loved by those who had come to follow him. He had been alive. And now he was dead, and now Mary Magdalene, with a grief-filled heart, perhaps even reciting the same words of the psalm, my God, my God, made her way to the place of burial. At the prospect of never seeing again the Jesus she loved, Mary Magdalene wandered the garden looking hopefully for someone who could, who would tell her what happened to the body of Jesus. Grief, anger, and fear clouded her vision. And as we gather on this Sunday of the resurrection, perhaps we too are unable to see the risen Lord as Mary did that first Easter morning. Grief, anger, fear cloud our vision as we seek to find some sense of God's presence.
presence in a world where violence and tragedy come so capriciously and hope feels not alive. And so we come here finding the alleluias weighing heavy on our hearts. It is not easy to proclaim alleluias when the reality of the human condition seems to cloud our vision of hope. Desperately, Mary Magdalene looked to the one she thought to be a gardener for even a hint of what might have happened to her Lord. She could not see the risen Jesus before her until with the intimacy of his voice he said her name, Mary. And then, and then she could see. No scientific explanation, no footage from the local news, a letting go, an opening of her heart, a new vision. This was how she came to know the risen Lord in her presence. She was surprised by hope. over the millennium. It has always been this way. From Mary Magdalene to the woman of Florida. In the midst of death, there is hope. For in Jesus, we know that death no longer is the final victor. Indeed, the hymn tells us the strife is o'er, the battle done, the victory of Christ is won. Alleluia, alleluia. And so, if you come here today looking for hope, we welcome you. We pray that you will come back again. For it is not just today when we need that hope. It is in all the days of our life. The ones filled with joy and the ones that are filled with grief. It is a journey, this living in hope. A journey you cannot find in just one Sunday. It is on the ordinary Sundays and the ordinary weekdays, month after month and year after year, that we begin to have our eyes opened to the truth that stands before us. It is here, in community, week after week, that we tell each other again and again this life giving story of God's love. God's love for us to remind us that we are God's beloved. For in this world of chances and changes, we need reminding often. It is here we welcome little ones and adults on their journeys. We share and offer them a community of believers who have come to know the presence of God's Spirit to enlighten their path along the way. It is here that we seek to grow deeper and deeper into the relationship the Holy One invites us to enter into. It is here, in community, that we find our strength in word and sacrament to go from this place 
into the world to do justice, seek mercy, to walk humbly with our God, and to proclaim the good news to a broken and sinful world, and to those who hunger for meaning in their lives. It is here, week after week, that we learn that this stuff of resurrection is not some escapist sweet Jesus bumper sticker easily summed up in a catchy phrase that touches our emotions and is about some rapture in the sky in the sweet by and by after you die. It is here. It is now. in this very moment, and in all of the moments when we gather here, week after week, living now as the people of resurrection, that we share the challenges to our journeys as well as sharing our joys, laughing together and having fellowship. It is here, week after week, that we deal with the reality of our brokenness, our failures, the difficulties of living and the pain and suffering of dying. And in the presence of the risen Lord who comes to us week after week in word and sacrament here at this table, we grow more willing to let go, more grace-filled, to open our hearts, more able to see a new vision and to be surprised by hope. My brothers and sisters, this is truly new life. This is truly resurrection. We hope you will join us here every week in the ordinary times, week after week. For it is here that we have learned to say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.